Heather from Painting with Fire Arts and today is my Christmas episode. I have crocheted some really cool Christmas items. Um, some of them you might have saw on some of my podcasts if you have been watching my podcast but if you have just turned in and you have never seen one of my podcasts and this is one of your first ones, then it will be your first time seeing them. If not, it will be your like second time seeing them if that's um, how many times you watched my podcast or whatever. Um, anyways, um, I am going to show you what all I have crocheted. Um, Alright, so first I'm going to start off with, uh, with some cute, very cute Christmas trees. That each one is different in their own way. So I will show you each one one at a time. The first one is the Carol Focus is a very, very cute, adorable, mini Amigurami Christmas tree without decorations on it, just the tree. And it's a uh, kawaii uh, with a nice little happy face that is. And I had fun making it. Pretty much, I ended up making this tree, which is like a bigger version of it. And I saw this other pattern that I thought was going to be for a tree like this size, but skinnier. But it ended up being like one that was half the size of this one. So I didn't want one quite that small, so I made it a little bigger. And in between this one and the little mini one that the pattern originally made. So pretty much this is made crocheted in the round. You do a magic loop or you could do chain, a uh, chain of a circle and then you uh, crochet the X amount and then you pull it shut and then you go increase, decrease all the way down until you get to the bottom. Then you change colors to the brown and you just do increases and decrease and then you sew it shut. But before you do all that, you want to, before you attach the brown on there and everything, you want to put your safety eyes in, which are 8mm um, black uh, safety eyes. The pattern didn't say to do the happy face, but I like happy faces on things, so I did that myself. And then, um, I, and they are from 6060 eyes always. And um, then the, uh, it's a black mouth with pink cheeks that are just basically embroidery thread from a craft store. The yarn that I have used for this pattern is Paintbox 100% cotton DK yarn, um, which is super nice soft yarn and it's great to make amigurami's because it's not super super thick for a DK but not super super thin like a finger weight so it's really nice and makes good size ones it's, and I use the size C hook, uh, crochet hook, I always forget the millimeter sizes, but size C hook for an American crochet. And, um, and it ended up becoming a very cute little amigurami treat. This one was made the same way, but with a different kind of pattern. They had these back loops that you do that you can then put leaves on it instead of putting a little happy face. And that was the original plan. If I started trying to put the leaves on, I realized I had to do an extra row of these back loops and I didn't do that. So the leaves would have looked half, the tree would have looked half naked and half not naked with leaves. So I decided to just leave it as is and it's cute. It could be an all year tree, all year round tree or you could deck it up and put little decorations on them. That's what I love. Or just put a basic happy face on it like I did. I think that they're super fun and easy to make and they're, they uh, are just so cute and adorable and they do stand up. This one I did work in the back loops on the bottom to create a better surface to stand on and if you get your bottom a little bumpy like this one I kind of did can't really see on camera and you can't really see it unless you touch it and stuff. Um, I try to get as flat as possible you could always put a piece of cardboard in the bottom and, and make it even more flatter and that's what I think I'm going to do next time because it does stand up but it's a little wobbly because I can't, I, it's not that I can't, it's just that I just didn't um, get the little bottom as smooth as I like it. This one it's a little more smoother, but because I didn't do the little back loop thing on it because the pattern didn't say originally, and after I showed it everything I realized I should have did the back loop right before I do my last two rows of increases is what I like to do. That's what I did to this one. It's, this one would have laid much flatter, it would have been much better if I just did that because she, in the pattern, 
said you could just hot glue it to something plastic and then bam, there you go, you have a nice flat surface. Or you could just, like I said, put something cardboard or wood, little pieces of thin wood you could get. There are circles at craft stores and stuff. Um, there's so many different things you can do to make it more flatter on the bottom, but those are just the things that I like to do. And um, you could I could have done that, and I think I will do that next time I make that, because if not, they're a little wobbly. They do stand up good, but it just would be just much better, I think, especially since I want them standing up. You can also turn them into a nice Christmas um, ornament is another good thing I like, where you could just connect on the top and put it on the Christmas tree, or you could put it on your keychain. Because they are small enough, they are the size of your hand, like this one's even smaller, it's smaller than my hand, I have super small hands, so, um, yeah, this would even fit in, like, a kid's hand, it's so cool, <laughs> and, um, and everything, so, yeah, you can turn them into keychains, you could, um, uh, you could put them on your Christmas tree, like I said, and you could also hang them on the wall, or you can make, like, a garland with all of them, which is uh, hanging on the wall, if you don't know what that is, <laughs> and, it's just like a bunch of them in a row just hung up on the wall. I will have a nice pretty one one day up there <laughs> and um, and so forth. And uh, it just depends how many you want to make and everything in a row. So if you want to make a lot of them, a garland probably is best. Or you can make a little tree village. You can do so many things with them. You can make them all different colors. Like they have white ones and blue ones and all kinds. So I want to make a rainbow one and a white one and a blue one next time. Oh, it's so much fun. love Christmas trees and I love... Uh, just the basic pine tree look anyways. <laughs> and then this one, if you've watched my podcast, you've seen it before. Um, this is a Amigurami Christmas tree. It is The way that you make this is it's two flat pieces, just two pieces that you end up sewing together. And then I just like to put an extra roll of crochet around. Or you can lip stitch it together and it puts a little row of crochet to make it a little better looking or, or whatnot. Um, pretty much you just do increase decrease to make the little shape of the Christmas tree. You do one piece and then you do the second piece and then you, like I said, you whip stitch it together and then you can just crochet it along the edges or slip stitch it and then crochet however, however many little gaps you want to make sure that it doesn't open and pop out. Before you do all that, you lightly stuff it and before you lightly stuff it, you want to put the safety eyes in. These are 8mm black eyes for up 60 60 eyes. And then I crocheted the little mouth for the embroidery floss and put some little decorations on it, at, which I was trying to go for lace, but they look more like decorations. And then the little thing was supposed to be the like thing that the lights are on. But it came out more looking like little decorations, I think, than anything. But it came out super cool. You could also put a little star on the top. That's what I was planning to do on those trees originally, but then I thought they looked good as is. So I thought the same thing with this, but uh, next time I think I'm going to put a little star on it and stuff and put a little bottom thing so you can see a little trunk, uh, which would be the brown piece so that you get a little trunk like this one, but it would be this shaped. And then I and then I would stick, um, so crochet the top and make it into an ornament, or you could put it, make it as a keychain or wall or garland or whatever. You could hang it on the wall anywhere, you could even just leave it against something and you have it as a nice little display. And it's so cute and adorable. I love it. And I feel it can be all year round, these things. Even if it wasn't Christmas. I love Christmas all year round. I love my holidays. I love Christmas. I love Halloween. I love every single holiday all year round. But uh, I guess it's supposed to be just displayed certain times of the year, but I like it all year round. But anyways, this is my um, next little Abby Grabby. It is a cute little mini pudding. I kept seeing all these little mini puddings. And some of them are like too big. Some of them were like more like Christmas ornament size. Some of them were like a lot better. None of them were really hand size. Then I found one that was hand size, but I I looked and looked and I couldn't find the little pattern. Then I looked at the plant June site. I think that's her name or June or something. It's the same person that makes the little pumpkins and I was like, oh I, when I typed her up and when I typed up mini pudding that sure enough popped up I was like I looked at her site. I was like, oh sweet. She made this one year so I thought it was cute that I ended up making the same thing. I, from her pattern. She ended up making the pattern one year, so she made one of these, and then I made one myself from her pattern, which is super cool. And it's super cute. It can be turned into like a little Christmas ornament. That's what she did with hers, or it could just be a decoration as is. I like it as is. Um, pretty much you just crochet it around, increase, decrease, 
around and around. You start off and it's a magic loop or you can chain. Or you do your single crochets to the sides and then you just do your increase, decrease after that. You create the bottom. Then you create, um, you know, it's not like, sh you don't decrease it enough to shut it. It's still open by the time you stop because then you make the white part. The white part, you just do, um, just do single crochets or you do the circle or you do the chain circle <laughs> in the circle. You close it shut and then you do increase, decrease and then you make, um, but this is just increases and then you do, um, little like, um, peacock edges, which are just chain, uh, or you got chain, single crochet, chain, single crochet, and then slip stitch, you do them X amount of times around, and then you create your white piece. That will become your top of the brown. So that's like the top part of the pudding. Then you create the little green pieces, which are just chain, and then you do little edges on them, which are just uh, single crochets, and slip stitches, and you just do it X amount, and you create this little pointy thing that looks like the leaves. Then you create the little berries that are just like uh, slip stitch, I mean not slip stitch, which are just chained into a um, circle, which is magic loop, or you can just do your chains and do the little single crochets in them. Then you pull it shut, and then you do single crochets all the way around, and then you create three little berries, and before that you create the three little leaves, and then you sew it on top of the white thing. But first, you put the sew the white thing, the white part, not the white thing, the white part onto the brown, and then you sew the leaves on top of it and the berries. I used to say put the leaves on first, then the berries, but you can put the berries on first or whatnot, and then the leaves, but it's best to do the leaves first so then the berries fit in between the leaves. So it creates a nice little three thing, three leaf thing with three little berries. And it's super cute and adorable. Hers didn't have the little happy face on it, but I put it on there. And I really love uh, creating these little Hawaii styled I mean, karamis. They're so much fun and I love the pink eyes. They're super cute. And the bottom looks like that. Which is so cool because then you don't have to worry about anything bumpy on the bottom because or sewing anything shut, you're just sewing things on top of each other, which I like a lot better. Um, it was super fun. Anybody can make these, just like anybody can make the Christmas trees. These are all very basic and, and beginner or advanced or no matter who it is, would have so much fun um, crocheting these. It doesn't matter what uh, stage of crochet you're in, you'll have a lot of fun doing this if you make one. Um, oh, all these patterns will be up on my blog as soon as possible. And so, next to it is this little snowman. You probably saw it on my podcast before. Pretty much, it is um, in the magic loop. You do single crochets working in the round, and or you could just do your chain with the single crochets, increase, decrease. Then you do some decreases by the neck because the snowman is all one piece. And then you do your increases, decreases on the head, and. These are all single crochets, increases, decreases, and then you sew it shut, but before you do all of that, you put the eyeballs on, which are 6 millimeters eyes that I got from 6060 eyes, always. And then I crocheted the mouth with black embroidery, I mean not black, uh, red embroidery floss. And then I created the hat and the scarf. The hat is just uh, magic lube or chains, and you just do single crochets, working in the red, increases all the way around. Oops! That wasn't supposed to happen. You're supposed to sew the hat on to the head, but for some reason I did it and it just likes to pop off now. That's why you sew it on. Because then I created a rainbow rim on it. They say that you could just create a regular rim on it if you want with just slip stitches, but I decided to just do another round of cheese and make it rainbowy to match the scarf. The scarf is just, they say to do it with single crochets and then X about to the length and then you um and then you just end it and put it on. I did it with half doubles instead of with a row of single crochets and a row of half doubles. I mean I have doubles. Two rows of oh no, yeah, half double crochet, sorry. I did a chain, then I did half so double crochets, then I did single crochets to the length to create a beautiful rainbow scarf that I tied it around the snowman's neck, put the hat on. I will end up sewing this on eventually because I don't want it to pop off again. And then you could create it um, just 
that created, uh, turned it into a Christmas ornament is what they suggested by putting a string in its head. Or you could just uh, keep it as is, and I like it as is because it's been a nice little desk, uh, little, uh, not really desk, it's like table thing that I, table, which is like our dinner table that I put my computer on. It's been sitting around um, since I made it next to me, and I always have different Ami Garabis next to me while I'm making things, and it, I love how little he is, how cute he is, and how he works out great next to my computer, and now the hubby wants one, so he will be getting one. <laughs> Some of these things are already up in my store, by the way, and they will be up in my Etsy store as soon as possible, as soon as I take pictures and put them in, just to let you know. And they'll be up all year round, not just during Christmas, but all year round. <laughs> and, uh, this is a cute little kid, Kate. I think the next time I make it, I'll put the face this way instead of this way. But it's, uh, pretty much it has worked, um, you do a magic loop, or you can do a chain and then you do just single crochets and you just do um you just do around and around to the to the amount that you want then you just keep going around and around and you do some uh, slip stitches to create the little hump that makes the kid keep part and then you make it the size you want i think i'll be making the handle a little longer and this part a little longer next time or i'll be making it a little smaller and skinnier so that way i create a little better um better one than this one, but this one came out super cute. I put the little face on it. That's optional. The one in the pattern, they didn't have that, but I put it on. I think this time I put the little cheeks on to it, but I think it's super cute and adorable, and it would work good for a little scene with the trees and this and some other little Ami Grammy so make a good little picture. Oh yeah, and, I, I, and it also would make a cute little um, ornament, I thought, as well as it would be a cute little thing hung up on a wall or just at the desk. It's been sitting next to me on my computer, so um, and it will continue sitting there until I change it up with something else. <laughs> that and the little snowman. <laughs> and I really love making it. It's super fun. I want to make all different color kitty keys, like rainbows and blues and greens and all kinds of different colors. Since kitty keys are every color now. <laughs> and I love the rainbows, so yeah. And last but not least are these cute little Rudolphs! Oh yeah, they're so cute. Pretty much, um, this one's the caramel looking one and this one's the chocolate one. They're made the same way. They're little tiny ones that I made so they're sitting. Um, in the pattern they had it more where the legs were more down like this where it looked like it was standing but it didn't really stand, it mostly sat so that's why I kept it sitting. I will, next I'll keep the legs a little closer so that way the legs aren't like that. It's like that. <laughs> and uh, they both look dissimilar. Pretty much it is um, increase, decrease all the way down. Rudolph's body and the head and body are connected as one piece through increases and decreases. And you start off with the magic loop or you do the chain and you do single crochets X about and then you do a red and red increasing and then you do red and red and red and then you do a decrease and then you do increase and then you create the little body and then you sew it shut its bottom. Then you make the antlers and the ears and the feet and I added a little tail on it. As well as you make its little muzzle they call it. But before you do all that you want to put your safety eyes in before you make the body. And I use six millimeter eyes. Then I, um, then I stuffed and sewed it shut through the bottom. Then I put the little, I crocheted the little muzzle piece they call it, the little nose piece with increases and decreases through magic loop where you can do chains, it single crochets and you work around and around. Then I sewed this little nose end to try to make a triangle. This way came up more triangle than that one. And then um, I added the little line here for its mouth. They just had it with the nose in the pattern, but I added the little mouth. And then I sewed that onto the face. I then sewed its ears on, and after I crocheted them, which are pretty much in, working in the round, single crochets, increases, uh, in, or just single crochets round around to X amount, sorry. And then the same with the legs and arms. And the tail even, and 
The antlers were one piece was th was X amount of size, whimsical crochets that you sew the little side piece on. You create that and then you sew them together to create like a Y, it looks like. And then you sew them back on. These are really supposed to be pointing the same like this. But I have it pointed one, one way and one the other. I realized it didn't really matter. It looks cute either or. And then, um, so after I sewed the little muzzle on and made the nose and all that and sewed it on, I then sewed its ears on. I then sewed its arms on, its legs on, or its, I guess they would both be called, yeah, arms and legs, or its body parts on there. Then I sewed, after that, I sewed its little tail on, which is super cool. I really think that gave it total cuteness and everything. I love these little minis so much. Um, and then I sewed its ears after, oh yeah, I already sewed its ears, I'm sorry. And then after that, I sewed its antlers on. And then I, before all this, I created its scarf, which is just, you chain X about, and then you sew single crochets, and you work it all the way down. Oops, one of my tails is sticking out there. I will fix that. But, um, and then after you sew it, I mean, after you single crochet it all the way down, you then clip it, and then sew your ends in, and one of my ends is sticking out, I know, but I will fix that after. And um, then Rudolph's scarf is done, but then you gotta s tie it onto its neck. And that's pretty much just, you just swing it around and just tie it on just like that. Just one single tie, and voila, you got a cute little Rudolph. Next time, I definitely will be putting the legs more like this, so that way he's not sitting out like that or that or that. So he's sitting more in a natural pose. <laughs> Instead of some weird little leggy thing going on. Other than that, he came out super cool. And this one came out looking the same. Uh, the cute little tail and everything. And this one's tail, I realize you have to put it lower, not higher. So, or it looks like it's in the middle of the back. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's about it. I hope that you enjoyed this Christmas episode of, me, of uh, my yarn um, crochet things and everything. And I hope to see you next time on my podcast. At my podcast, I mean, <laughs> not on my podcast, at my podcast. And I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful day and night, no matter where you're from. And you can get all the patterns that I have, on, where I've got them from and everything, off of my blog. I will be putting those up as soon as possible. And my blog is at https dot dot slash slash paintedworldfiberarts.com. Um, and I'm going to be letting you all go now, so I will say my little thing at the end, and then I will say bye-bye. Um, you can, um, if you would like to buy any of my crochet items, um, this one currently is up at the store for, for sale, and then all of these will be, that I showed you, will be up on my store, so as I take photos and put them up, and that is my Etsy shop, if you'd like to help support me and my family, or if you'd like to buy a crochet item for you or anybody that you know, um, my store is at https dot dot slash slash www dot etsy dot com slash shop slash painted world fiber art or you could just go to https dot dot slash slash www dot etsy dot com you can go up to the little search part and type in painted world fiber arts and be in my store will pop up and you click the little link and there you go or you could just go down below and click the link and you could be at my Etsy store and you could buy any of my crochet items there or you could just throw me uh, a, a, a um, what you would like in a, in a conversation in my email or at my Etsy store and you could just tell me what you would like if you saw one of the items in any of my podcasts or even this show or anywhere on um, Instagram or anything that you would like me to crochet for you or if you have any ideas for me you can always just uh, let me know in an email or through my Etsy shop or down below in the comments or anything um, and, I will, and I will get back to you and let you know more info on what we'll do about that and my email is at Painted World Fiber Arts you can email me about anything there if you would like um, I love comments please comment down below um, I love talking to each and every one of you and I love all of your comments thank you so much um, if you like this video, please hit like down below, as well as if you would like to see more videos from me and have me entertain all of you and everything, please subscribe by clicking the subscribe button and hit the little bell thing so then you see the, my little thing drop down on your notifications and you know when I make a video and I'm not buried under a thousand other videos <laughs> and so forth. Um, and 
please visit all of my social medias. That is Twitter, Instagram, Blogloven, and Facebook. And all those are links down below. And if I forgot anything else, it will be down below, all the links. And that should be it. And like I just said, have a Merry Christmas and I will, and a great rest of the day, night, afternoon. Next, And I will talk to you next time on one of my podcasts or any of my other videos that you would like to see, such as my unboxings that are, that are happening. Um, that happen every month, as well as some other future videos coming up. And I love doing these seasonal videos, just to let you know, and I will be continuing to do that. Like, I'll be doing a February one, which will be for Valentine's Day, and I'll be doing an Easter one, I'll be doing a St. Patrick's one, I'll be doing one in honor of my birthday, which is in March, and um, a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on. So I continue to do these fun little celebration um, seasonal and seasonal videos. I'm also going to be doing a really fun winter time fun time video and some other Christmas things will be appearing soon that I have in the making that just haven't didn't get finished in time to be on this video and everything but um so I hope you like Christmas all year round <laughs> and everything and like um Halloween all year round because you'll be seeing lots of things like that for me because those are my two favorite holidays and um yeah and I'll talk to you next time bye bye